my clone is a good dad. <laughs> or you're funnier than your clone. Or, or yes, or I'm funnier than my clone. Yeah. Yeah. What if you're the clone? <laughs> ha ha! Hi, I'm Ryan Reynolds. I'm also Ryan Reynolds. Strange. But that could be Rob McElhenney. It is. Pronounced Rob. And today, we're going to let L ask us anything. But before we get started, make sure to check out Welcome to Wrexham, FX, Hulu, Disney Plus. The greatest athlete of all time. Pele's up there. Yeah. I, I, I always on, hate this argument now because, because it's like these are all these different sports. Because if you look at like a decathlete, yeah. you say, well, they can do so many different things. But who, I, sometimes I think if you could plug, like what's the perfect um, athleticism where you can, and, and sport where you can plug into various sports? Because I find that any, any of my friends who were professional athletes, they were always good at every sport and then they just had to pick a lane. But I feel like if you took somebody like Kobe Bryant or somebody like Michael Jordan, it, those guys were so fast, so quick, so big, and so athletic that they could probably do anything. So I would say it, was probably be, it would probably be a professional basketball player. Yeah. Everything, but play is a tough word. Tried um, to play would be the phrasing. I played, I tried to play basketball, football, hockey, soccer, um, wrestling, rowing, boxing. I didn't really make it through uh, any season of anything. Jiu-jitsu, karate. Jesus yeah. Christ. It was really sad. It was, re it was really sad. It's so lame to say my children, but I well, mean... That's I thought you were going to say nude hang gliding. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. Man. Have you done that? Always. Please. Is there a way to do it clothed? Come on. Wow. See, I'd, I'd love Get it. out of <laughs> town. <laughs> Yeah, definitely my family. I mean, well, yeah. we're not monsters. Yeah. Um, we don't want to get stabbed when we go to the UK, so we call it football. Always football. My first business venture was uh, paper route. Yep. I had a paper route. You know what paper route taught me though? It taught me accountability. I also uh, worked at a grocery store called Safeway. I drove a forklift and I worked the midnight to 8 a.m. shift and I loved it because it was a great preparation for Hollywood. You know, I'm pretty much on time, I'm pretty accountable, and I look at those experiences as formative for me. It was, uh, you know, if you're late, jobs like that, the, you're fired. Uh, show business is a lot more leeway and that sort of thing, but, uh, but I like that it kind of ingrained accountability in me really early. When I was 12, I had a paper route as well, and I remember, it was one of those papers that nobody wanted. It was a weekly that would just arrive, and then we were instructed to go uh, once a month and collect for uh, a paper that nobody wanted. And I realized very early on, the first time that I went, that I would get lots of doors slammed in my face, so that I, I pivoted from there the next month, I went back, and I realized that I would, I would tell the people, if you just pay me $2, I'll stop throwing the newspaper on your on your curb and then you never have to throw it out. I'll just throw it out. So I would take the newspapers, I would throw them out, then I would go collect, collect which now I'm realizing is kind of like what gangsters do. And that guy would go on to create 600 popular television shows. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, I definitely the crippling anxiety. Mm -hmm. That has been a daily meal. The best part, I think, is, I mean, when they win, I don't know that there's any better feeling on earth. Um, when they lose, that hurts. Um, for me, it's m making new friends, making new connections in the community, um, getting to spend a lot more time with Ryan, truly. It's, it's been uh, an amazing experience, and, and we forged so many new relationships because of it. That's true. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we started this thing, I felt instantly comfortable. My daughter said <laughs> the other day, she said, Daddy, Rob looks more like your brother than your brothers. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we do kind of seem like we're brothers a little bit. So it, it just worked, you know? It was just one of those things where it's a bit of, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of luck, but a lot of just, you know, mutually agreeable personality traits, I suppose. Um, that I have a deeper well of anxiety than I thought that I had. Um, and, uh, and it comes out every Saturday morning and every Tuesday afternoon. Um, my abject fear every time I go into a football match is unlike 
uh, any other sport. I, I, I think it's just very specific to this particular sport where anything can happen at any given moment. Terrifying. For me, it's probably my just, uh, you know, ob objectively obscene obsession with football now. I, I was shocked that I, I went into this, this whole deal really with no real understanding of the sport. Um, not a huge, I've never watched, you know, uh, I don't watch a lot of professional sports, but I've never really watched a, a football game in its entirety. Um, and now I'm obsessed with Wrexham uh, AFC, but also obsessed with the sport in general. Liver, lung, and heart. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, uh, water. Um, <laughs> Shelter. <laughs> Shelter's nice. Three things in the hyperbolic sense that we cannot live without. Boy, I'm a bit of a sugar junkie, so chocolate for me is like a... Really? Yeah, that's kind of obsessed with, yeah. See, I just learned something. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I am kind of a, you know, I know that's sort of ridiculous. I'm a little obsessed with my own family. I love being at home with my wife and my kids and my daughters. Um, so that's, that's a big one for me. I think that can cover the last two, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get killed if I don't say my children, my wife, and my dogs and cats. I'd say Wrexham. Yeah. I think the Wrexham project is the biggest business risk because you have so much more to lose than win. It's a, it's a tremendous responsibility because it's not the kind of thing where, oh, if it fails, um, then we just shutter the shop and uh, go into bankruptcy uh, and, and settle out of court. I mean, it's the kind of thing where there's such an emotional component to this and it's such a tremendous responsibility that I, I think that that's what makes it so dangerous. Yeah, and we're also, you know, really kind of tinkering and, and, and you know, helping motivate the destiny for the third oldest football club on the planet that play in the oldest international stadium on the planet. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, so that's certainly a factor. I love that everyone sings. Everybody sings. Um, they're just, a, they're a singing country and it's really quite beautiful. I heard Rob actually once say that the Welsh are, I know you were paraphrasing from somebody else, but that the Welsh are born with the, the fist of a fighter and the heart of a poet. And I thought that that was really beautiful. And I think that that's pretty true. Well, we always knew from uh, the beginning that we wanted to find a club uh, whose community um, treated it with uh, the respect that it deserved and was the beating heart of the town. And once we identified, we actually found a, a, a few clubs like that, but nobody like Wrexham. Um, and once we identified them and we realized that we had a tremendous amount of responsibility um, that we had to, to take on. And, and, and if we don't make sure that we are running every decision we make through the lens of is this what's best for the community, um, for, lo for long-term success, then, um, then we failed. The first major splurge I ever had was in New York City. I, had, I, I booked like a few commercials um, and I was working at a, a restaurant at the time and, and the commercials paid me a, a good chunk of money and I had never owned a car before. And have, owning a car in New York City is the dumbest thing you can possibly do, but I had never owned yeah, a car. rent twice. It's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought, well, I wanna own a car. I finally have money, not a, not a new car, but a used car and there was this minivan that was always parked outside of my house and there was a sign on it that said for sale uh, $900, and I thought, man, I finally have $900 to spare, and eventually that's gonna run out, so I just gotta spend it as quickly as possible. And I bought this minivan, and it was the greatest feeling uh, of my life, because it was the first time that I, that I could own something of like real value. Mine, mine was a clone. You know, because every celebrity needs emergency harvestable organs, in case, you know, in case something happens. Mine's not as grounded as yours, but yeah, it's, it's fine. To each his own. Dude, can we all get access to the clone, or is it just for you and me? Because you. What do you want to do to the clone, Rob? I, I'd like to take some of your organs. I feel like your organs. Rob's like, I, I want to punch organs. the clone, right? <laughs> he becomes the whipping boy. I want to beat the living shit out of your clone. Remember all the sports I was talking about playing, <laughs> um, and or trying to play? That was 
that was a time when I felt like an underdog. Not in like the socio-political context, but I, I would say that, you know, spending 10 years trying to get Deadpool made, I felt like that at some point you start to feel a little bit like an underdog after 10 years of no. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, I don't know. That I'm a good dad. Yeah. Or my clone is a good dad. <laughs> He's great. Or you're funnier than your clone. Oh, yes, or I'm funnier than my clone. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. What if your clone was funnier than you? What if he wasn't? What if you're the clone? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Thank you so much for hanging out with us and Elle today. Make sure to check out Welcome to Wrexham. 